So yeah. we've been here this week in Utah, and I think it's been marvelous to have farmers, ranchers, producers here from people who have small gardens and high tunnels to people who have thousands of acres of dry land farming to, to people who do irrigated farming. We've had some some of these, these people in our sessions, and they've really brought um, some good challenging questions. And, and it's had a lot of energy, hasn't it, Mark? Yes. To, that these farmers and NRCS employees have interacted and I think it holds our NRCS employees a little bit responsible because these farmers are asking all kinds of questions. What about these cover crops? What about no-till? How do I improve this? There's been a lot of positive energy. And, you know, these are the people who might start something. They might be the first one in the county to say, I'm going to plant a cover crop mix. I'm going to switch to no-till. I'm going to apply one of these soil health tools to, you know, bring my soil health up to a, to a new level. And it starts with just that one person, and as we've seen in other parts of the United States, that's what it takes. It takes a, a farmer willing to step out and, and take some, someone of a risk and experiment. And before you know it, you've got other people watching, learning, and other people are trying the same thing. You know, so this is something I've got to think about. I really do. And I know we've done a lot of traditional things for a lot of years, and so uh, I, I, we've described the, the soil uh, and, the weather, and the health of the soil here to the point that I really need to look at mine. And uh, I'm literally concerned that we might be actually doing too much tilling and maybe I'll be considering something different. What do we mean about soil health? It's about the capacity of a soil to function. How do we tell if your soil is healthy? you got to look at your soil. you got to dig it up with a shovel or a spade and look at it. We're trying to look at things like the detritosphere, that's the organic layer on the soil surface. We're trying to look at the drillosphere, that's the earthworm channels and the presence of earthworms in our soils. We're looking at the porous sphere, that's the pore space in the soil. The agratosphere is the aggregates in the soil. And one of my most favorites is the rhizosphere, that's the zone right around the root where biological life is occurring as that plant is releasing sugars out of that root. How do we tell if a soil is healthy. Some of, the, some of the ways is a simple aggregate stability test here. As water moves into this dry soil and puts pressure on that pore space, you can see how some of these soils, these conventional tilled soils, just don't hold up to any pressure. They don't have no strength or stability. They're, they're not functioning soils. These soils are holding together with biotic glues produced from polysaccharides of, of the microbes and the plant roots and glomalin, which is a superglue from, from mycorrhizal fungus. Four basic things to do to improve soil health. Number one, disturb your soil as little as possible. Number two, keep your soil covered with plant residue or live plants. Number three, keep a living plant producing these polysaccharide sugars to feed the microbiology. And number four, diversify your crop rotation as much as possible. And you may have to use cover crops, and we're suggesting multi-species cover crops whenever possible to diversify that crop rotation. In soil health, it starts with understanding what healthy soil is and how it functions. Soil health is not about applying tools at first. If you want to be a skilled carpenter, you have to have a good understanding of carpentry and a knowledge of how to use those tools. And soil health is the same way. So when we talk about cover crops, we talk about no-till, we talk about crop diversity, we talk about using livestock to improve soil health. You need to look at your operation, you need to look at your goals at, at your farm or your ranch, understand which tools are going to work for you. You apply these four principles that we have talked about, but how they apply at your place, in your county, in your state is going to be different. So we want our NRCS employees to have a good, solid understanding of soil health, and then they look at tools. How do I use cover crops? How do I use cover crop mixes? How do I, how do I design a cover crop mix to address resource concerns at the, at the ranch or farm that I'm working at? One tool to evaluate soil health is this aggregate stability and the infiltration rate. Man, we're encouraging all of our NRCS employees to understand this concept and learn how to teach it and use it. It's been really fun as, to me as a state agronomist to go out and visit a few farmers and to put on these workshops and really show what's happening to a biological living soil system. They're all calthrop silt loam soils. Conventionally tilled, uh, common rotation is beets, uh, corn silage, wheat, Right this year they're in seed onions. Uh, alfalfa is generally in the rotation, but it hasn't seen alfalfa for a, while, for a while. These two little aggregates, we'll just use one of them. This comes from 
500 feet from this soil, Caltrop Siltloam. It's been in alfalfa for four years. Previous to alfalfa, it was grain corn. Previous to that was winter wheat. And they've had very little soil disturbance. This soil, we'll pass this around after we do the demonstration. This soil is my garden. Uh, we've been there for about four years now. And man, it has been fascinating <coughs> to practice what we've been preaching a little bit. And we'll pass this around. So they're all three Calthrop silt loams with a little bit of management decision. Okay, gentlemen, put, put uh, those, those soils in. Okay, put them in, guys. Yeah, there you go. So we got conventional till on the right. Uh, Jerry, did you crush that? What's going on here, Jerry? You got you got a good view of this, Jerry. These are the Jerry. These are the same soils by soil definition. These are within 500 feet of each other. Holy mackerel! This looks like a nuclear explosion at the microbe level. This is what I grew up doing: pulverizing that soil. You know what happens, Mother Nature? She can fix this. She turned it from this to that. With only, if we get out of her way, she'll heal herself. But you know what? I can take this beautiful soil right here. It's, you know, it's on its healing way, and I can destroy it. Watch this. Look at that. I pulverized it in one tillage pass, maybe two tillage passes. It is powdered, Thomas. Can you see that? So, now let's look at these two soils. We're going to do an infiltration test. Water is ma is, has, 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 has entered into these dirt clods immediately. Now we got these two. We got some food coloring here. But the challenge with water is we got to get it in the ground. Okay, rain on that, guys. Just pour that in here. We even got a little residue I threw on the top. Pour it in fast, and it's all right, you're boring me. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a massive rainstorm. What's happening, guys? This one is percolating through. Now, this is a massive rainstorm, too. Now, we tamp the edges of these cylinders so the water just doesn't hit the outside and go around, so it has to go through the center of that. Oh. You know what, maybe I forgot to drill holes in the bottom of this one. No, Jerry, there's holes in the bottom of it. It'll eventually drip through. This is polysaccharides. This is, this is sugars. Another name for, for sugars is polysaccharides. And here's a soil particle. Here's a can of glomalin. Don't kid yourself, silicon. It really is glomalin. That's coming out of mycorrhizal fungus. Now, we got, a, we got an exact replica of one of these little microaggregates here. And it looks a lot like a solar system, but, but the biggest soil particles in our soil are what? Sand. Sand. Huge, big molecules. And then our next size particles in the soil are silts, right? And under the electron microscope, clay is, not, is in little sheets. So check this out, guys. In five or six years, the soil has been healing itself, getting this microaggregate stuck together. This mycorrhizal fungus is kind of putting pressure on these little soil particles, kind of pushing them back together again. Let's put on some glomalin. Let's say our mycorrhizal fungus, we have some mycorrhizal fungal in our soil, and it's going to exude this glomalin all over this microaggregate. And we've got polysaccharides. Now you've got to hold them up a little bit straight so that the, doesn't just blow all the air out. There you go. Get the mask on, man. Work that around the front. <laughs> Can you see how Mother Nature is building this soil aggregate? That's what she's doing. She's taking this pulverized soil and starting to put it back together again. Now, here's Marlin on the triple K digger, or the offset disc. What's going to happen to our little aggregate, guys? 
Zoom, here comes the disk. Zoom, what's going to happen, Jeff? What's going to happen to this little mycorrhizal when this, this is a microscopic level, but here comes this huge disk off this. It's gonna, what's it going to do, guys? Oh, shoot. What happened to my microwave again? I can't believe in eastern Idaho that we have wind erosion. Look, watch this, guys. Just pay attention here. The soil particle is loose. It's not attached. Watch this. Only the guys in the front will ever be able to see this. Watch this. I can't believe my topsoil just blew away. It's blew into Montana. Oh, <laughs> thank you for some topsoil. Gentlemen, I hope the next time you get on a tillage implement that your heart burns. Because <laughs> if it doesn't, I guess I did a poor job and we should probably just pack up. Let's give these guys a round of applause.